Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining our uh, webinar today on Panopticon, a generic Kubernetes metrics exporter. Uh, we're going to uh, wait a couple of more minutes, and so maybe more few more people can join. Uh, then we're going to start. So I'm going to come back uh, in uh, two three minutes again. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our podcast. Uh, oh, sorry, let me start. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar today on Panopticon, uh, a generic Kubernetes state metrics exporter. I'm your host Kamal. Uh, today I have Pulok Kanti. He's an engineer at Apps Code uh, and also the lead developer on this project to talk about Panopticon and give us a live demo in the second half. At the end, you will have a uh, question answer session. So you can also post question answer through the Zoom chat. Or at the end, you'll be able to ask uh, questions, uh, you know, turn on your audio and ask questions. So let's start. Uh, Look, uh, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Tom. So audience, uh, are you looking for a generic state matrix exporter for your Kubernetes resources? Uh, then this session is for you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our today's webinar. This is Pulok. I'm a software engineer at AppScore. Today, I'm going to introduce you to Panopticon, a generic state matrix exporter that you are looking for. Let's see our table of contents. Uh, at the first, I will answer the question, what is Panopticon? Uh, after that, I will share you the background story of Panopticon, why we decided to uh, build a generic state matrix exporter, and why we uh, select the name uh, Panopticon. Uh, then I will share the key features of Panopticon. Uh, after that, I will show you the comparison table uh, between Panopticon and another uh, state matrix exporter called QStat Matrix. And after that, there will be a demo. Uh, in demo section, I will uh, I will uh, generate matrix uh, using Panopticon for one of our uh, MongoDB uh, KubeDB custom resource called MongoDB. And I will also generate matrix uh, for deployment, which is a Kubernetes native resource. And at the end of the uh, in, uh, end of our webinar, there will be a question answer session. Uh, please uh, ask your question in the Zoom chat. Uh, we will uh, answer those questions uh, at the end, and uh, we will love to hear from you. Uh, then talk about Panopticon. Panopticon is a generic state matrix exporter for any kind of Kubernetes resources. Uh, that means using Panopticon, you can generate matrix from Kubernetes native and custom resources 
without purifying the actual resource. Uh, it has a Kubernetes controller and it provides a Kubernetes CRD uh, called Mectis configuration. Uh, in Mectis configuration, uh, we will tell the configuration about the Mectis of our targeted resource and apply it. Then Peroticon will do the rest for us. The Mectis that are exposed on the on an HTTP endpoint called slash Mectis. Uh, those Mectis are served as plain text and they are designed to be consumed uh, either by Prometheus itself or by any scraper that is compatible with scrapping a Prometheus client endpoint. Uh, let's uh, move to the next slide and the background story of Panopticon. So why we actually build, uh, decided to build a generic state matrix exporter. Uh, we want to collect state matrix from our various projects uh, like QDB, Stash, from Vault and others. But we don't find any existing tool that would accomplish our needs because our custom resources, our products have some custom resources and we, were, we want to show, we want to collect the, those custom resource states as matrix and want to show them in Prometheus or in Grafana. So we are looking for a, a generic state matrix exporter, but unfortunately we don't find any. Kubernetes has a project called KubeState Mactis, but currently it does not support uh, collecting Mactis from any Kubernetes custom resource. Uh, moreover, the Mactis for Kubernetes native resources are predefined in KubeState Mactis, and there are hardly any customization option. So finally, we decided to build our own generic resource Mactis exporter. Uh, let's talk about why, we, why did we choose the name Panopticon? The word panopticon derives from the Greek word panoptes, that means all seeing. It is actually an institutional building or a system of control designed by an uh, English philosopher, uh, Jeremy Bentham in the 18th century. Uh, the concept of the design is to allow all prisoners of an institution to be observed by a single security guard uh, and, and without the prisoner being able to tell whether they're being watched or not. Um, like the real Panopticon, our Panopticon is a Kubernetes controller that watches Kubernetes resources passively and exports Prometheus matrix. So let's talk about how Panopticon uh, works. So at first, user have to create a Mactis configuration object, which will hold the necessary configuration to collect Mactis. Uh, here, Panopticon's controller is continuously watching those Mactis configuration object and when a new matrix configuration object is created, uh, it gets an event of that. Controller is also watching Kubernetes resources accordingly uh, to the given configuration and collects state matrix from them. Those matrix are stored uh, in an in-memory store, which is specified uh, in the slide as matrix store. And Panopticon syncs the matrix for any chains uh, in the Kubernetes resources. After that, when a Prometheus server or a scrapers come to scrape the slash Mactis endpoint, Panopticon serves the Mactis from the Mactis store that is already generated. Then the Mactis can be visualized in Grafana or in other visualizing tools as well. So let's uh, uh, see uh, the architecture uh, with an example configuration. Uh, here, we want to collect Mictis from our MongoDB custom resource. Uh, for that, we specify the MongoDB API version. And, and here, is the, here is our target ref. In the target ref, we actually told the MongoDB API version and kind. And after that, there, is a, uh, there will be a list of Mictis. And here, there is an only one Mictis, which points to the uh, MongoDB custom resource version field. So uh, when uh, user actually create those Mactis configuration object, Prometheus get an event of that and read those configuration from it and create, uh, create the KubeDB uh, MongoDB version Mactis for all the MongoDB resources uh, present in the uh, cluster. So, and when and store those in Mactis store. So when user deletes uh, a Mongo, a MongoDB custom resource, uh, Panopticon uh, get an event as well and delete the corresponding Mactis 
stored in MACD store. So MACD stores always holds the recent information on the cluster. So let's move to the next slide. Here I will talk about the key features of Panopticon. The first feature is uh, that the support for Kubernetes native resources. Yes. So we are uh, Panopticon is currently support from uh, collect metrics from Kubernetes native resources. Then the next feature is support for any kind of Kubernetes custom resources. So Panopticon, using Panopticon, we can collect uh, state metrics from any kind of Kubernetes custom resources. Then the next one is uh, provide a Kubernetes CRD called metrics configuration. So Panopticon comes with a CRD called metrics configuration. Uh, all you need uh, a metrics configuration object to collect your make this from a target ref and you can definitely configure it. And the next feature is that actually that the make this configuration of a resource is dynamically configurable. You can change those matrices in the make this configuration object and apply it and Panopticon will do the rest for you. Then the next feature is uh, we will support, uh, we are supporting a lot of custom expression evaluation functions. And the later part, I will discuss about those expression evaluation functions as well. Uh, the metrics is served in the slash metrics part uh, by Prometheus and or any uh, any scrapper that is compatible with Prometheus client endpoint. And and yes, Panopticon is also collects its uh, own process metrics. By those metrics, we, we can uh, know how many uh, how many times slash metrics path is scraped on how many uh, how uh, how many times it needed to scrape those metrics. So let's see the comparison between Panopticon and Kubestar Matrix. So the first feature is support for Kubernetes native resources. Uh, currently, Panopticon and Kubestar Matrix both are supporting Kubernetes native resources for collecting state matrix. And after that, the feature support for Kubernetes custom resources. Currently, Kubestar Matrix doesn't have any support for uh, collecting metrics for Kubernetes custom resources. But in Panopticon, we can easily collect those, uh, those state metrics from any kind of Kubernetes custom resource. Then user control over metrics. In yes, in Panopticon, you are you can collect metrics, you can control over you can uh, control over those metrics, you can configure it in your way. But in Kubestar metrics, the metrics are predefined, so you can control those. After that, the dynamically configurable. In Panopticon, uh, you can change those uh, those matrix configuration in dynamically, but in Kubestar matrix there is no scope about it. And currently, Kubestar matrix is, has support for automated sharding. In Panopticon, we have currently have no support for automated sharding, but we already planned about it, and I think we can come with it in near future. After that, Panopticon and Kubestar matrix both are exposing their own matrix, own process matrix actually. So let's jump into the demo. So before demo, I, uh, I will share you uh, how can you install Panopticon using our Helm chart. For this, uh, you have to first add our apps code repository, then you have to update it, then you can uh, install using Helm install Panopticon command. And uh, you have to set our license in the set file license and you have to give the license path there. So jump into the, uh, let's jump into the demo part. So I am using Linode Kubernetes cluster for the demo. So before let's check our cluster status. Yeah, so there is three nodes, all three nodes are ready. Uh, I am using Kubernetes version 1.2, 1.1. Let's check our CRD, it's still CRD is practice. Still actually to the gate. Yeah, so there is the CRD for make this configuration dot make this dot .com, which is actually for our make this configuration object. Let's check our Panopticon port to still get course, which is actually running in kubeops namespace. Uh, here is our Panopticon port, which is actually running. Uh, then check our currently act active service monitors. It still get service monitor or namespace. Yeah, so there are uh, some service monitor kindly active. The last one is for our Panopticon. So let's show, let's see a MongoDB custom resource matrix configuration object. Uh, here is an example or sample of a matrix configuration object for our MongoDB custom resources. 
uh, in the metadata name, we actually specified the name in the naming for the naming convention. Uh, we recommend to use the name in a way that uh, in first part it uh, uh, it consists the API version group, and the second part it will uh, it will uh, consist the kind of MongoDB. So in the spec, there are actually two sections: the target rev and matrix. In target rev, there is a uh, API version and kind. So you can see the API version is pdb.com, beyond alpha 2, and kind is MongoDB. And there will be a list of matrix after that. And you can see there is a lot of matrix. Let's check the matrix one by one. So the first one is kubedb MongoDB created. And there is a help string after that, MongoDB creation timestamp in Unix. We'll actually describe the matrix. After that, there is a type of that matrix, which is actually GOS in this case. After that, there is a field which, uh, which uh, has two subfield type and path. In type, it is date time, and that path is metadata creation timestamp. And after that, there is a metric value, and there is a value from path that metadata timestamp. And the second matrix is QB MongoDB info, which represents the QB MongoDB instance information. And the third one is QDB MongoDB status phase, which uh, indicates the MongoDB instance current phase. The fourth one is QDB MongoDB replicas. And which is actually tell us about the number of available replicas for MongoDB. And in the metric value, there is value from expression. And here is the resource replica. It is actually a custom evaluation function, which I told before. And it takes object as a parameter. And for that, uh, in parameter section, I told the key and the value path. So Panopticon collect the object from parameter and return the resource replica count for it. After that, there are QDB MongoDB resource request CPU, which tell us the requested CPU uh, amount by MongoDB in unit core. And there is a label to indicate the unit. And there is also an expression evaluation function called total resource request, which actually uh, has two parameters, the object, which represents the MongoDB current object and resource type, uh, which can be CPU, uh, or memory or storage. In this case, the resource type is CPU, which is specified in the params. After that, there is QDB MongoDB resource request memory, which tells us the requested memory by MongoDB in bytes. It is also uh, collected using one of our uh, custom evaluation function called total resource request. And um, there is the letter, uh, letter matrix is QDB MongoDB resource request storage which tell us the requested storage size by MongoDB in bytes. Uh, it, is a, it is also calculated using one of our uh, uh, custom uh, evaluation function called total resource request. So the letter matrix are also same called QDB resource limit CPU, limit memory, limit storage, and MongoDB mode. In MongoDB mode, it actually tell the current MongoDB mode. Uh, it can be replica set or sharded or standalone. So let's uh, apply the MongoDB resource and check those matrices. So it's still apply this config kubedb ML. So the kubedb dot dash com dash MongoDB is created. So let's check those matrices in Prometheus. So here is my Prometheus. So these are the targets, and here is the Panopticon targets, which is state is up. So let's check one of our matrices. Let's check kubedb mongodb replicas. Here is the kubedb mongodb replicas. Uh, there are two mongodb, mongo rs and mongodb demo, which is uh, which the first one is replica set has three. A replica and the second one is MongoDB demo, which has one replica. So let's check our MongoDB object here. Get MongoDB. So here is the MongoDB shown here. So I previously said that this uh, MongoDB objects are dynamically configurable. So let's check that it is dynamically configurable or not. Okay. So for that, let's add one matrix here. So 
So for the matrix, let's collect the MongoDB version matrix. So PubDB MongoDB version. Then I need a field called help, which actually tell the MongoDB uh, uh, versions uh, uh, description. So let's keep it simple for now. MongoDB uh, version info. Let's check the type field. So this is actually goals. Let's check the field. Uh, sorry, so here the version field is actually strings. So for that, we need the levels and there will be a key. Let's say it is version. Sorry. And then there will be a value path. So our panopticon will collect those matrix from value path. So let's keep it dot spec dot version. Then as it is a, a string field, so specified the metric value. Uh, if the value is one, okay. Sorry. So let's apply it again. If CTL apply, okay. so configured. So let's one minute picture. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, let's check our Prometheus. Yeah, so let's check our targets. Yeah, so our targets is up. Let's check for the last script. Yeah, we skipped two seconds ago. Let's check the version field. TubeDB, Mongo. Version. So, yeah, so here is the version of our MongoDB replica set and MongoDB standalone, and both are 4.2.3. So let's see, there is a version field also uh, collected in Mongo, TubeDB MongoDB information. So let's, that is redundant. So let's uh, remove it. But before we remove it, let's check the TubeDB MongoDB information first. Let's check this matrix first. Yeah, so here is QDB MongoDB information. The, uh, it kindly uh, collecting some information of our MongoDB. Uh, it is SSL mode visible, storage type durable, uh, dimension based wipeout, and has the version field. So as the version field is redundant, so uh, delete the or remove the version and apply it again. Yeah, so the version um, our object is configured. So let's check the QDB MongoDB function again. So yeah, so version is removed. So our MongoDB, uh, so our matrix configuration object is uh, configurable. You can configure it as your net. Uh, later, I told, we will check uh, a matrix configuration for a Kubernetes native resource deployment. So check the matrix configuration object first. Here is the matrix configuration object for deployment. Uh, in the target rep, I, I, will spe I specified the API version and kind. The API version is apps v1 and the kind is deployment. And there is the matrix list. Uh, the first one is QDB deployment created, which is actually indicating uh, the current uh, Unix time creation timestamp. The later one is QDB deployment st uh, status replica, which uh, representing the number of replicas per deployment. And the third one is QDB deployment status replica ready who is represent the number of available replicas per deployment. And the next one is QDB deployment status replica available, uh, who is actually tell us the number of available, available replica per deployment. And similarly, there are so many matrix who is are indicating the current state of a deployment resource. So let's apply it first. CTO apply, show me, apps deployment number. Yeah, so it is created. Let's check our cube to be. Let's check cube deployment spec replicas. So here are 
current replicas, there are eight deployments. Let's check those deployment from our terminal as well. Let's see to the deploy one space. Yeah, so there are eight deployment currently running. Let's check those deployment from Grafana. Before that, I forget one point. Yeah, that is, we, all, uh, we also port uh, Grafana for our MongoDB resources. Let's check that as well. Uh, here are the Grafana dashboard for our MongoDB. And the first one is MongoDB mode that I already before uh, said, the MongoDB replica and MongoDB standalone replica set uh the whose uh, mode is uh, replica set and standalone mg stand dash and standalone whose mode is standalone replica set has three replica and standalone has one replica and those uh, phase are ready and the later part there are six graph showing here um, the first three are re uh, resource requests for cpu memory and storage and the later three is cpu uh, memory and storage limits the first you check uh, uh, as the replica set comes with three port uh, every port is requesting 0. Uh, 0.5 millicore, 0. 0.5 core CPU. So that's why the line is uh, parallel to 1.5. And the standalone comes with one port. That's why the line is uh, parallel to 0. 0.5. So let's say the deployment. Let's refresh it. Yeah. So there's the graphs for deployments. And the first one is spec replica. We have eight deployment and those replica counters shown here. And after that, there are status replica and there are, uh, uh, these are the status replica count. After that, there is a ready replica percentage. All replicas are ready and there is a available replica percentage. All replicas are available. So let's create one more deployment using Kipsitil. Kipsitil create deployment nginx. Uh, using nginx ms yeah so it's created let's check from that using terminal still get deploy space yeah so nginx is ready in default namespace so check its replica count from prometheus first so i refresh it yeah so there is the one more matrices count for engineers deployment, which is currently have uh, one replica. Let's check it also from Grafana dashboard. I'm going to refresh it. Yeah. So here is the replica count for Nginx and those match with uh, status replica count. And those are also ready and available. So let's increase the replica count to see the changes in matrix and Grafana as well. So capsule scale, let's, let, let's increase the replica count by three and let's check it from terminal first. Yeah, it is currently going to ready. Yeah, all the three replicas are ready. So let's check the matrix from Prometheus first. Let me check. Let's check the targets. Yeah, let's do it for the next scrape. Yeah, it's great. So let's check now. Could to be sorry, deployment. Specificus. Uh, why those nginx are not here let's again apply it skilled for some reason it is not here yeah but uh, the status grafana is showing the three i think for some reason prometheus can show it here let's i think the put forward i need to put forward again it but sometimes the put forward makes things difficult okay let's check again i think there is an issue let's 
delete the deployment delete the Linux. Let's get it again. So let's check the deployment from terminal first. Yeah, that's ready. Let's scale it again. Still, oh, three. Let's do it a bit to see the old uh, engine are ready. So let's check again. But before, let's check our targets. Yeah, it is okay. The graphs. I think there's an issue in this part. Okay, let's keep it for now and let's see the Grafana side. Actually, it's showing the status of PKS3 in the next one. Okay, that's not an issue, I think. Just give me time to check the port forward is okay. Let's check it again. Right now, for some reason, the Nginx replica is not recognized by our panopticon. Okay, let's move on. So after the demo, there is the resources for our uh, panopticon. There is a blog post uh, written on panopticon. I, you can uh, visit here and there is a manifest file. There's a, uh, uh, given uh, the uh, use manifest file are given in uh, are given in kubedb projects slash demo slash panopticon and the kubedb make these charts are specified here so let's see uh, one by one so here is the make this kubedb uh, make this chart and the temp uh, templates you will be find this make this configuration objects and uh, in these objects we will collect make this for our uh, mongodb resources uh, you can use those make uh, use those configuration after that um, after that there is a, uh, i use those manifest file you will be find those manifest file here uh, in our kubedb slash project repositories uh, in slash demo slash panopticon paths after that, there will be a kubedb make this chart is given here. Yes, here is the kubedb uh, make this chart. I will show nothing. Then let's see the panopticon blocks. We have written a blog post in details to uh, how our panopticon is works and in details. Uh, we showed all the things, our functions, and how ca you can install, how you generate MACTIS, and everything is uh, written in details here, so you can read it. So that's it from our part. There will be, uh, is there any questions? Uh, thank you, Pulak, uh, for the demo and the presentation. Uh, just to add a thing quickly, uh, uh, the kubedb metrics chart is actually part of our kubedb enterprise package. So if you are, a, you know, uh, if you're using our kubedb enterprise uh, version of the software, it will be available to you uh, as part of that uh, package. So when you install it, you'll be able to just turn it on with the in the Helm chart. Uh, so yeah, you have to deploy the Panopticon. Uh, uh, controller separately, but the Helm, the YAML file that we just saw. Uh, for these different uh, kubedb resources will, you will, will be provided and maintained by us so you don't have to worry about it but you'll be able to see the uh, metrics in your grafana dashboard 
Uh, so yeah, so that uh, I'll open the um, floor for any questions. So you should be able to uh, uh, turn on your audio and ask questions. You can unmute yourself and ask a question. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I had a question, uh, and I sorry I, I joined in a bit late. I had another meeting, uh, but um, I was curious about uh, um, in uh, backups. So uh, when a backup is successful, there yeah. is a um, um, there is a uh, crud. Uh, uh, um, yeah. yeah. So you have some visibility uh, on on uh, on the command line level. Now my question is, can I pipe that output result into Panopticon and then visualize it? Is that the flow you guys are imagining? So uh, it, it thanks David for joining actually. Uh, so for the uh, the stair side of things for the backups and recovery, that is actually already supported. Uh, there uh, using uh, uh, using the, the uh, is already part of a stash, so you can actually like when you uh, set up the backups, you'll be able to see through a Grafana. So the reason we don't use Panopticon there is because uh, with the stash uh, things are a little bit different because as you already mentioned that they run on a cron, so you know we we uh, you cannot really go to a one individual job and collect metrics. You kind of have to collect all the metrics. Uh, it's called uh, like a push gateway in the Prometheus world. So we have to collect all the metrics in a push gateway and then export it to Prometheus. So so what you are trying to achieve is possible. It's just done in a little bit differently, but it is all part of the stash operator, and you can uh, you can deploy it there. Yeah, it's actually already documented, and there is also a Grafana dashboard that you can use to sort of see those metrics. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, my pleasure. So, uh, anybody else have any question? Okay, uh, Dennis, I see you joined. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, or I guess I will uh, close the session today. So, okay, yeah. thank you. Hey, hey, I was doing uh, it's it's nice, uh, a nice idea, but uh, not into the metrics. Uh, so I was interested uh, in your solution, but not uh, have any practical usage for for this. Yeah. Yeah. So just to add, uh, 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 I'll probably, yeah. So just just to add one thing, this is actually showing you the sort of the state metrics of the Kubernetes resources. But then uh, if you are deploying something like QDB to manage your database, uh, you uh, we also deploy the database specific exporter. So that will actually show you, so let's say you are running Mongo or Redish or Postgres whatnot, and, and you want to see the metrics for the database itself, like, you know, various kinds of cache memory or like, you know, buffer size and things like that that is also available. So there are like effectively metrics at, at all levels, right? So there is the metrics for the operator, metrics for the CRDs, and the metrics for the actual application layer. Uh, and th those are all, and, and then if you're doing backups and recovery, that is also available. So those are all available through, and uh, exported to Prometheus. And then you can actually uh, have a you know, graph, graph on a dashboard to expose those. So that's, uh, that's possible, yeah. Okay. Oh, so that connects uh, the dots. Right. So you'll be able to see see the actual, let's say if you're deploying Reddish, you'll be able to see the Reddish level metrics through that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, then, uh, yeah. So we'll, uh, thanks for joining today. Uh, hope to see you again next time. And if you have any question uh, after the call, you can just email us. Hello at appscode.com or support at appscode.com. And uh, we'll be happy to answer you. Uh, you can follow our Twitter uh, channel, AppScore HQ, uh, sort of uh, to keep an update on the various stuff that we do and release. Uh, so see you again next time. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. See you. Thank you.